Welcome, this is the 2.N Experimental Procedure Design Workbook Solution. Here, you can read the scenario to yourself. The first part is an experimental design. Explain how Dominique and Blake could determine the force of kinetic friction extended on one of the wooden pieces. The first part asks you what needs to be measured and what are the algebraic symbols. Friction force because it's asking to find the kinetic force of friction. And then the second part, it says that in the scenario, you can cut the plank into different lengths. So a lot of students will say that the surface area uh, would be a good one to get. So you need the length of the wood, the width of the wood, and the height of the wood. The reason why here that the surface area isn't needed, you don't need the surface area is because you can just use the length of wood, width of the wood, and the height of the wood to um, are the variables that you need to get it. Remember, the friction force is mu times the force normal. The next part, ask this for the la la um, labeled a design for the setup. So here is how the graph would look like or the image of how the lab would be set up as. There's nothing fancy about the lab setup. It is as simple as putting the object on a surface area, a typical table, but make sure that there, um, that there is friction on the table. You're going to need the materials that you will need is a, um, a scale, a force scale here, and a hook that is attached to a block. And you're, you will be the one applying that force on the right hand side. You are going to attach different masses on the scale and pull it. Okay. Um, a suggestion is for you to have different length, um, masses to see uh, different uh, friction forces to ca be calculated. Now, once you have the lab set up, you can now write the procedure on what to do. A suggestion that I have for you is that on the AP exam, they will never ask you or they rarely ask you to compute your own data because they have to grade it. What they're going to do is they're going to give you data in the next part. So look after the procedure, look at how they got data. In the end, they got an area of volume and kinetic friction. So imagine getting this from here, from the procedure. So think about it. If you want to work backwards, what is the procedure that you have to do so you can end up with this sort of data? That is the best suggestion I have for you when you want to think about what type of procedure you want to set up for this lab setup. The first thing is to measure each block of wood for its length width to make to make sure you have different surface area for that block. The block you have is a rectangle, so the surface area is just length times width. You don't need height, right? That is going to be uh, your surface area that you're going to be using. Okay, that's the area here, m squared. The next part, you're going to attach a spring scale on one side of the block, so which is right here on the right hand side of the block. The top of the scale. It's attached there. Part three, you're going to grab the other side, which is on the right hand side and pull the scale with a constant speed. The reason why you need it at a constant speed is you're trying to apply a force to the right hand side. You're then going to measure the force of friction as the force register on the scale as the piece of wood begins to move. So here you're going to apply a force at that point. The, your force applied is going to be equal to or slightly above the um, uh, frictional force and that's going to get the block to start moving. Okay, Your force that you are going to be pulling with is going to be slightly equal but you know it's a little bit bigger because if it's equal the object won't move right it's at equilibrium so it's going to be slightly higher than the force of friction okay so it's so small that on this scale you could almost say that it's the same so you're going to apply a force to the right hand side and that's going to be equal to the force of friction pulling in the opposite direction now you're just going to repeat the experiment four um, four to five times with um 
with the same block to reduce the error of the friction force for that block because sometimes you might pull harder sometimes right um, so the scale reading might be a little bit um, off so that's why you want to repeat the experiment four times or five times with the same block so you could get a good measurement of the force of friction then after that you are going to repeat the experiment with different size blocks two to five times step six is very crucial because if you look at the uh, free response on the ap exam they always give you a point for uh, making sure that you know how to reduce error and the way you reduce error is you do multiple trials as soon as you do multiple trials you're going to get a better measurement it's this idea of the law of large numbers so always make sure you include um, a step of when you repeat it for multiple trials so that is what step six is and that's about all the procedures that you're going to um, need okay the next part the you are gonna see this calculation and at this calculation it asks you to um, on the grid graph the data that can be used to test omni specific hypothesis label the axes and using the appropriate scale okay so um, I want to look at my input and output the volume here is useless because the volume doesn't really give me um, anything that I need so all I care about here is the coefficient of friction and the area on my my what I'm controlling my input is going to be my x-axis so that's gonna be my area because I control that based on uh, the block that I am setting up then I'm gonna have my kinetic friction as my y let's see can I rotate this as my y because um, that is what's the resulting okay so my input is area my output is kinetic friction then now I could label this make sure you put it in the right scale so here I see that my smallest my smallest x value is right here at 0 0.0025 and 0 0.125 is my highest you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move the arrow one, I'm gonna move this one two three so this becomes 2.5 times 10 to the 3 and so on and so on okay this is going to be 5.0 times 10 to the 3 as well this is going to be 7.5 times 10 to the 3 this is going to be 1 times 0 times 10 to the 3 I'm just writing it in scientific notation and this is 1.25 and this is times 10 to the 3 all right now I'm gonna plot this it should look like this is gonna be um, let's, uh, let's see I can scale it differently so yep I can do 2.5 uh, it's not there's something wrong with my pen so I'm just going to um, do this separately and attach it okay hang on all right so here I have the graph for you so you can see how it looks like here you should saw that it is linear next part does the graph support the hypothesis so let's look back at her hypothesis the hypothesis is that she hypothesis that the force of friction of an object is directly proportioned to the area of the object so directly proportion means there's a linear relationship is it we could say yes there is a direct relationship between the surface area and the force of friction because the graph shows that the force is directly proportionally to the area it's by the linear line as well as the y-intercept here starts at zero zero next there is actually a flaw in the procedure please explain what is the flaw in the procedure you have to think about uh, what she's comparing here force of friction by definition force of friction is um, force of friction is mu times force normal okay think about what force normal is force normal is really mass times gravity 
Okay, what she's saying here is that the um, force of friction is the area. Sorry, um, the area is directly proportioned to the force normal. Think about how it really affects this. Okay. So each piece of wood actually has a different volume. So they have different masses. We should already see it here that each block is going to have a different mass. Okay. Then the friction force depends on the normal force. We know that force of friction equals mu times n, which is the normal force. And I wrote it right here, but we know that the normal force is equal to mg. But the normal force depends on mass. Since the experiment did not hold mass constant, then the conclusions above are invalid. So here they hold the area. Um, they try to get the area, but the mass was um, different to each one of the scenarios. That's why the conclusion is invalid. There isn't a relationship between area and force of friction because the mass changes and you did not hold that constant therefore there is no linear relationship and that is it for 2n